Hey, so here I'll be showing you how to uh, make a gun detail it a little, just in case you didn't know. And especially one person um, who needed help. Alright, so there's block bench that what I use that broke for a cubic. Uh, so basically, you go to Java block item because we want to use the model for Minecraft, and this is just a list of what I made so far. Uh, so just click that, X this, I don't even know what that is. Uh, so first I'll just show you an example of my gun, so you, you kind of get the idea of what I was talking about. So this is my remodel uh, 22 long rifle that I made yesterday. Uh, so it's pretty much the same look, just that I kind of added it, the uh, texture so it looks more smooth and dark, more uh, unique. And also, uh, I put details in the iron sights, you see it here, if you put it straight, hold on, if you put it straight, you can kind of see through, it kind of matches, so it's pretty cool. Um, and Alright, so I saw the problem in your model, so like basically the structure is alright, because you kind of got the idea, but the thing is, uh, like, okay, so what you do is, like, you s kind of, uh, well, if you see here, if you compare this, uh, grip and the main body, the size is kind of different, right? It's because it's logic. In real life, if the grip was as thick as the body, you wouldn't be able to grip it tightly. So it's supposed to be a little less, uh, wide than the uh, main body. And same, uh, same goes for the magazine, of course. If the magazine is too thick, it's not going to go in the body uh, to be able to shoot uh, and function properly. So basically that's why if you see a little gap, uh, it's a little smaller than the main body, the structure. So that's one thing that, that's one detail that actually enhances your uh, model so it's pretty important, even though you don't really see it from the side. If someone is using the model in game, you will kind of see uh, how there's like a little gap, a little dent. So it's pretty uh, important. Even a little detail can change how much uh, the model generally looks like. Yeah. So basically, that that's the first thing. You need a little gap here just to make it a little smaller because it's you. Uh, Put it like literally right here. You put it right here, uh, and then you do this, and you try to match the body. And like, if you see, it's not really it's that uh, logical here because you can't really grab it. It's like same wide, same width as the uh, buttstock and the body and it's going to be impossible to grab it, right? And also it looks kinda bad. Like, no offense for the fat people, of course, but... I don't like fat guns, okay. So let's just go undo. You gotta click it multiple times sometimes. You can also uh, press Ctrl Z, that's way faster, actually. So that's the first thing. And second thing, if you've noticed, I have these little spikes coming out. Uh, the reason I put them is because if you've seen some grips of the guns, they have the uh, spikes here to kind of maintain your grip, uh, make it more stable. And this exists too, I'm not really sure myself. I haven't touched a real gun in life. However, they could exist this, so I put this, and just by putting this, you can kind of see it's way better than a regular rectangular grip. Uh, just for comparison, it's much better because there's details, and only uh, adding these like five, six doesn't really change the texture. Uh, uh, I meant the size of the model, so it's uh, kind of essential if you want to have a good model. And for the magazine, uh, also, I noticed for the magazine, you put it at the same width as the body. It's logically not possible because 
it will not have a space to enter properly. And not only that, if you don't think of it by logical uh, logics, then well, it still doesn't look as good because it's too fat, you know. And as I said, I don't really like fat guns, so uh, it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little smaller width. You could even put it to really a uh, uh, really skinny, but of course that's your choice. And if you notice here, I did the different color with the actual uh, part so that we can kind of notice the difference and it would actually look better. I will show you what I mean. So if you click this and let's say uh, this is just copy. Uh, if you don't know how to get these, just click toolbar, customize and then go, <coughs> sorry, go all the way. Uh, well, you'll find copy and paste somewhere around here. Just keep scrolling around and then basically copy the texture It will show you copy the one face Come here paste. It will only copy one uh, texture face So just click apply to all faces to apply uh, copy And this is a little detail I did for kind of making the end of the magazine uh, it's not really necessary, but if you want to, of course, you're called. Um, now you see uh, it's, it doesn't look bad at all, actually. However, it's kind of hard to distinguish where the mag and it's a little odd. And let's just say that I wanted to make it look as it was. Oh, just going to use Ctrl Z. Now this is what it was like before, and if you see it, someone looks better, it looks more categorized, more uh, distinguished from the other colors, and it makes it more unique. And also for the long rifle, uh, the barrel, where the gun comes out, the bullet comes out, uh, basically I color it a little light gray, well it's kind of dark gray. But not as dark as this, because if it was as dark as this, it would look fine, but I wanted to kind of make sure it looked like a metal part instead of any custom uh, customization. So I left it like that, and if you see it's like a skeleton without any solid uh, grip, and there's a little barrel going through inside, little hallway for the bullet. And basically that's uh, something that could really enhance your models. And, I, and the third thing, iron sights are really important if you want to have a detailed model because you might think it's important. However, for people who are using the model, they're going to check everything and see what's good and what's bad. And they're going to see the model and that's when they're going to decide if you are actually a good artist or not. So. It's pretty important if you want uh, to have respect. Not only that, like I don't go for respect, I just go for fun and details because I'm a gun, uh, gun fan. However, if you want respect, that's something you gotta do, uh, especially. And yeah, something that you need to work on. Not even for respect, for, for details and your own, uh, own quality, your goods, etc. And this is the fourth one, the bus dock. So it could always look different, like it could be just completely filled, like completely filled, you know, blackout uh, with no space. But for this one, I just did it like this. And just keep in mind that guns and images or sketch fab, they're all examples. Like even in real life, there's a lot of variants of each guns, like M4, M41, like they're one specific name however there's like bunch of type bunch of looks for the gun so like there's a lot of customization and a lot of uh, types variants so you never have to follow the example right uh, how it looks like however if you are not really good at first you could that's what I did and then when I started getting a little better at it I kind of did my own thing customization just put on random stuff and see if it worked out. If it worked out, I used it. If it didn't, I changed it. And I kept like doing that, repeating. That's normally why it took like two hours for a model before. Now I know more systems and mechanics, uh, mechanisms. I can kind of finish things in one hour, but 
don't try to rush things when you're not really experienced because it's just going to mess, it, mess things more. When you're new, it's important that you do it properly, neatly, and nicely instead of doing it fast. And when you're actually advanced, that's when speed comes in. But when you're new, never speed is first. Quality and effort is always the first thing to measure. Alright, so now I'm just gonna show you how to make a gun. Uh, it's probably not gonna look as good because well, I should save this. Uh, because I'm just making it like directly on the spot and it's definitely going to take a while but if uh, it helps you uh, I, I'm willing to do it and I hope you're willing to watch everything just to kind of improve yourself it's always a good thing to improve yourself but, yeah alright so one second So I'm gonna start with general shape. Uh, I normally use hexadecag on the most of the time, but you could always use octagon. That really uh, decreases the size, and it could also even look better than hexadecag sometimes. So it's really your call. But however, I'm just telling you that hexadecag normally takes more space. But I'm gonna go with this for now. So I'm gonna start with a barrel, so I'm not gonna... Uh, actually, I can make a full gun. Not really good looking, however, yeah, anyways. So, uh, let's just make it a little bigger. So we'll go for two. You, you gotta always readjust by just by looking and kind of assume how big your gun is going to be and how uh, much space it's going to take because, like, as you might have known already, there's limits on both sides. You can't go further than this. Like, you can't go further, you can't go further here, so like, if it's too big, then your grip might not, like, not your grip, but like, any parts of the guns might not fit. There's always an option to kind of scale it down, so there's no problem if that happens to you. However, um, you know, just not to, things, uh, not to make things too big, I find one uh, too a little big, so I'm gonna go for 1.5. And I think that should be fine. And we're going to start making a barrel first. I normally start with the uh, muzzle and the barrel, but wouldn't matter too much. Uh, of course, all the barrels of the guns are different. However, I'm just going to go with the uh, most common one, which is the one I made for M3 for for uh, A1 Commando, uh, basically Commando in game. So basically a cylinder looking, uh, basically a cylinder looking a uh, barrel, a grip here, a uh, yeah, grip, sorry, and let me just apply texture. I'm sorry if this doesn't appear on the screen because my software doesn't really show this on the screen, which is kind of sad, but it's not important, so I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do it already. Daisy Warzone, also has Minecraft uh, textures. I normally use the wools most of the time. Uh, dark, darkish black and black is kind of the same thing, but it's a little darker, I guess. Dark black, etc. I normally use uh, normally use dark black or darkish black these days, but I think black should be fine. No, actually, I'll go darkish black. All right, so darkish black. You can adjust uh, the look. If you see here, the textures are being changed. That's because of how much texture is inside this little square frame or rectangle or whatever you want to call it. But I just want a simple, neat texture. So I'm going to go for uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0, 0. That's the uh, neat one. And as you see, there's like no little single pixels, just one. Uh, just one color that makes it neat. 
and basically that is the that's, that's the body, the main frame. Now I'm going to make one more, just make it a little bigger, maybe 6, 5, and there we go. And then we're going to reduce the size to around, let's say, 0 0.2. Uh, I'm not really using this for the Yum Network probably, so I, the size might be a little big, but I'm just trying to show you the idea, so I don't really care. So you could duplicate, put around. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know, if you press Control Shift and you drag, it like kind of makes it more accurate. Uh, kind of lets you drag it into smaller measures. I found out about it uh, by asking questions in the Blockbench Discord. Get it if you need help, ask for help, they will help you. So yeah, uh, so let's drag it around here. And you could also just grab multiple ones by pressing shift. Now I have two selected, and that saves time a lot. So I'm gonna drag those two and try to make it the same measure. There could always be a better way, but I just use it this way, so yeah. Um, so I'll just shift this and this. It's already kind of getting big, it's already around 72. 72. Just for the uh, grip, it's not really a good sign if that happens normally because for a grip, maximum you should have is like 50. Uh, and I'm not even close to being done yet, so it's really big actually. Uh, I just want one. You can always press shift on the blocks. I'll need to select one uh, specific shape. And then duplicate. Place it here. Duplicate one more. We might need one more. And one more, and that's, uh, the measurement is a little off, but uh, don't mind that, it's fine. So anyways, we have a little uh, grip here, the for grip for M4 carbon, let's say. And let's just select all the hexadecagons so we can color it at the, at the same time. As I said, press shift if you want to click them all at the same time. Uh, there we go, and we just gotta apply the cubes, put it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the neat one, and there we go, we kinda got the details of a grip. And now we're going to start on the, uh, the barrel. So since the barrel gotta be a, a little smaller than that, actually uh, much smaller than the grip, we're going to put it around the one. We're going to test how big it is. Like you see, it's way too big. That's not a barrel. That's like, no, that's not. Uh, hello. Make sure that your gun barrel has holes because it's supposed to shoot out bullets from where you know. 0 0.5. Like if you. S oh, never mind. I'll show you again. Uh, by the way, if you press delete, it deletes the thing without you having to click it every time. It's pretty useful. 0.5 and um, let's say 1. But you saw here that it says maximum size is 0.25 because that's like way bigger than your actual width of the cube that's forming a hexadecagon. So basically, that's why you need to decrease the size. If that happens, just to confirm, just put it to 0.24 because 25 is the maximum. And 24 is like before the maximum, so basically just put whatever you want 24. But if you do 24, it's going to be too narrow, so I'm gonna say around 0 0.15, let's say. Uh, and then we bring it all the way up here, and the barrel is a little thick, but I think it should be fine. Um, now, if you see the bullet hole, um, normally it could be a little bigger than this, but I wouldn't mind right now. So you could put it a little up, kind of adjust it, as I said, control, control, shift, and drag. It drags up the exact measurements, helps you a lot. I think that should be fine, and we kind of extend the barrel. Uh, I think that should be fine. And for the barrel, normally it's just metal piece, so we're going to make it a little lighter black. Uh, we could also do it, we could also do it here, apply the same texture, but move it to a lighter area. So you see how it's already lighter than this. 
but it still makes sense. Now, if you, uh, it really depends on the people's preference, but for me, like normally, from getting big to small all of a sudden, it looks kind of odd for me. So what I do is I grab this, like let's just check how, I guess this is, check the Y. So it's 1.5, check the Z, I mean 1.5 thickness. So we're going to go for around 1.2. And hello, no needed. And we're going to bring it up here. Just a little slight edge to kind of see the carving. Perfect. Alright, now it looks, I don't know, for some people it could look a little odd. But for me it's, I don't know, it's kind of the same. But we'll see what happens uh, as we go on. So for here, we could use hexadecag on uh, octagon, I mean, because we want to save time. We're going to try to make body parts now. And normally the gravy is kind of bigger than the uh, the body parts thickness. Or it could be the same, so I'm going to put it around the 1.4 because that one was 1.5. Don't want to make it too same. Um, now, I'm going to drag it a little down. Maybe a little upper now. And then just push it all the way back. That's way too much. If it's always too big, like as I said, grip needs to be a little bigger. Now that you look at it, it's a little odd looking. You could go to scale and do this and scale, but it could be a little off in measurement. So I encourage you to use this, even though it takes more time for the best measurements. I personally think 1.2 was uh, pretty good. And we're going to put it here. Around the 4, I think. 5. Yeah, I think 5 should be right. And a little upper. And perfect. Alright, so it's there. And we're going to color it too, of course. To the same color, possibly. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You could always do different measure. It doesn't matter. It really depends. Sometimes having textures like having all the pixels, it could help more. It could look. Uh, it could make it look uh, even better. But for these cases, uh, just clean black out is a little more. I would say uh, fancy. Uh, so bring it down. Operate a little. Uh, zoom in with the mouse 3, the middle button, the roll button, you know, for uh, zooming in, so that you can see the clear measurements. If you see here, there's a little gap between. Uh, so we're going to try to increase the size, now 1.77, and I don't see a gap, so that's perfect. And it's a little fat here, so we're going to bring it back a little at 4.6, I guess. And now it's way to bottom, so we're going to make the size around uh, 1.2. Uh, yay, I think that's alright. Well, we'll see how it goes. We always gotta suspect if it's good or not. We always gotta suspect if anything could be changed, if this is valid, this makes sense. Because if we don't suspect, we're just going to be confident in ourselves and we're never going to change our mistakes and correct them to make it even better, right? So it's always important that we need to admit our mistakes, listen to other people's advice or better than you. Because if you don't, it's going to be practically impossible to kind of improve yourself. You're just going to be stuck in your own world, just trying to seek for help, but no one's really going to help you if you don't listen to them, right? It's kind of uh, logical. Uh, Alright, so just measure that a little thinner than the actual body. Because as I said, it needs to be distinguished from each part. And then push it a little here. You could always put, put it all the way up here. Like, just at the edge, like that. But... If you want, you could also just drag it a little backwards, push it down a bit. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I'll change after. You can push it down a bit. Actually, it's way too thick. You should go around here. Now you kind of look at the measurements or the eyes. If you think it's reasonable, then go for it. If it's not, definitely remeasure. That's your call. Of course, um, you could always 
duplicate a block, rotate, and of course decrease the size, and drag it, control, shift, and drag, as I said. If it's always too big, of course you can decrease it, it's your priority, and kinda make a little di diagonal so it makes, uh, it, uh, it makes it look even better, basically. Uh, but some people don't like it, so it's always our call, as I said. And now we're going to go for the mag. Now mag needs to be extra thin, because it's supposed to fit inside. Uh, to 0.5, no, no, no. Too big. 7.5, 6, 5, 4, 5. 6, 6.75. I don't know what I did. Okay. Yeah, I think five makes the makes sense. Now, also for here, don't forget about this one. This also needs to be a little thinner, so we're going to put it at one point eight. Perfect. Um, now we're going to put it all the way down. There we go. And at some uh, rate, at some distance, you're going to carve it to make it look like an actual rifle magazine. You don't have to, it's only your call. Uh, however, most uh, bullpups have these carved ones, so it's normally a good idea to make carves. And as I said before, change the color so it makes uh, a category, different category from the other stuff. Copy, paste. There we go, we already have the uh, around half of the gun. And just make it make the uh, little holder at the bottom drag it here just a little uh, sticking out not too much if it's like this it's going to be look kind of ugly unless you're planning on something just like this or actually this around this should be uh, good enough 1.9 perfect and don't forget this side always you gotta check the 3d not only 2d 7.1 uh, I move the size always uh, you can control Z to move it back no worries and now I touch the size 0.8 now look at it visually it looks identical so that's good enough and I have my mega ready and I'm going to now make the grip the rear grip now carve it the other way, you could always do it straight or like that, but normally the guns have um, ones that goes like this. And it needs to be way thinner because as I mentioned, you cannot have a grip too thick or you're not going to be able to grab it per uh, properly. And of course, this side too. Don't make it too thin because it's going to look kind of weird at the end. Now I find this a little thick then I always adjust the size and around up to here. Don't make it too long because normally the mags are longer than your gun. Uh, you see it's way too long, but I think I can make it thicker. Around 2.5 should be reasonable, I suppose. You could also extend this because uh, I don't think I have space. Uh, if this happens, you can either take these blocks out manually, like drag it out, or you could just simply, as I told you, shift click, just to click the ones that you want. Uh, that's the simplest way, actually. Perfect. Uh, now I'm going to put it a little backwards. That should be fine, I suppose. And just readjust five point two exercise. Same goes for this. And that was okay. I'll readjust after, anyways. 1.4. Just keep trying to find the one that fits the, fits it the best. 1.4. I think it's going to be alright, just so we don't have enough space on the back. Yeah, just added a little more. Yeah, I think that's good enough. 
I'm going to put a little more down. And for this one, you can also put the uh, little line on the bottom. But the max uh, is kind of optional. You don't really have that. Unless I'm wrong. Probably wrong. Extend that too. Don't forget this side. Not too much. That's the key. If you do too much, it's better to not do it in the first place. And for the grip, you could either put grip pad like I don't know how is that called actually but like I mean you could make something like this you can make something like this what that's what I meant this little thing that kind of supports you from losing grip I'm not going to make it far here and I am now going to add the details on the mag as I showed you before the little tip on the bottom so kind of adjust yourself at first how big it's going to be I find that a bit too big then I go for 0.4 and I think that should be fine so we're going to make the right rotation for it this is not off so 20 20.5 20 for this one should make sense and if, it, if you find it too big you could always kind of push it a little backwards so yeah it doesn't look too big if it's too big as I said it's better to just not have it if it's too big nothing too exaggerated is normally good we're going to also push it back a little more because I find it a bit too big and if the little uh, measurements kind of cover this then you'll have to do it on the keyboard but it's normally not uh, too much problem it takes like 30 seconds 10 seconds and uh, yeah i think that's fine so since the tip kind of make the grip bigger we gotta push a little more just around here and for the thing we can push it around up to here push it around here this is kind of like visual measurement or you could do it manually through the keyboards but normally uh, it doesn't really come out to be what you want. You could always click the main frame and kind of compare if it's big enough. If it's not, just kind of drag it one more time and now see it's identical. So that's kind of how you do the measurement of tip. Uh, three should be pretty good. And since it's smaller gap there, I'm going to move it around a little more. And I think that should be fine. Now look at from far away. Uh, it would be better if it's a little down. Now shift click. Oh, now if you see it, there's a little difference here. Now oh, there we go. We don't have a difference. So we're going to move it a one down. One down. Uh, that should be fine. And then we're going to do the back now. Just make it a little thinner. Just one thinner maybe and drag it here. And we're going to reuse this, but different rotations this time. Uh, the opposite way, I mean. Now we put it around here just a little. And you could reuse this block as uh, for these two, or you could just make a new one. We're reusing what save the space a little, but not too much. 0.3. And we can move this instead. And since it got bigger on the back, we move it a little more. And there we go. So that's the grip. Now it looks a little big, so we're going to push it down a little. And this goes. Uh, I think it should be okay. I think this is a bit too big. So I'm gonna push it down one. Yeah, that's alright, I guess. This too goes in a little more. Because as I said, too big. Better not to have one. One five five. 
Alright, well let's go with the other stuff to kind of see. This could be a little, bit, a little thicker. I don't want these scripts to be too big. Alright, now for the for trigger. Uh, let's make the trigger guard first, but I, what I noticed from uh, the models is that they make the trigger guard same uh, width as the body. And normally that's not the case, it's because we only take examples from the 2D images and from the side it looks just fine. However, if you actually look in 3D it's going to be a little fat and I don't really like fat guns as I said. So we're going to reduce it to around 60% of the gun. So I don't really know 60% like of the body exactly, but we're going to uh, assume that that's 60%. It could be thinner if you want, but that's just my taste. It could all exchange for me too. 0.5 and we could drag it a little more up. Alright, there we go. Now we go for the trigger. Of course the trigger cannot be this thick. Trigger cannot be this thick. It's just weird. So we're going to make it even thinner than the trigger guard. So we push it down a little to kind of have the blue lines popping up so we know where to go. 0.3 should be reasonable for this case. You could also do 0.2 if you would like, but I would go for 0.3 for now. And you could check the uh, back with this if it's measured properly, I think it is. Now also the trigger cannot be this thick, right? You cannot press it simply, so you're going to put it at 0. Point decimal measurements. And I would say for this around 0. 0.15 should make sense. Now you see uh, there's not really much space for the trigger. So I'm going to uh, over it a little, over this too possibly. And just one measurement, but we have enough space now. So, do that. And then we carve to kind of make the trigger because we don't want a vertical one, it's just vertical. Now, if you see it's a little thick, you will notice. Then you could do 0.1. You always gotta zoom out and zoom in constantly to kind of see the changes or fixes and see what you can do to improve it. Now, if you look at it, it looks way better. Now you could leave it like this, or you could add a little curve detail, diagonal detail, to make it look even better. But it really depends on people. Normally, uh, normally I love to do it, but some people might not. Like I meant, like curve like this. So like we kind of have the curve. We can make it smaller. Just decrease the size of the X. Put it down a bit. There we go. And we could do the same thing for the other side, but with 45 degrees this time. And then, there we go. So someone looks better, someone doesn't, it's your call. And we have the main frame, now we're going to make the, uh, the back. Now, uh, you could just straightly grab the pole. I would go for octagon because it saves more space. Uh, as I said, way too big, then small it down. 0.5, I find a little small, I think 0.7 would make sense, personally. 0.7, nah, it's a little bit. Like, as you see, it could always be off your imagination, so you gotta constantly change and see if it's good or not. I think 0.6 should go well. Now we drag it a little up, because the boss looks normally uh, up here, and we push it down a bit. We could always add this, just for a general uh, misclick. Apply the cubes, get the texture. If it's too dark, you can always change it to lighter, to kind of distinguish. Having multiple colors on a texture is normally better looking than having all the same color. Real life it might be the case, but real life you don't make guns to be cool, you make guns to defend and fight. So real guns, unless they're actually customized for fun, not really uh, made to be looking cool. 
even though some of them do look cool. Now my preference is that I'm going to add a little you know, little uh, stuff here, but this is big. I think one should be fine. To uh, just what just like what I did here, a little curve to kind of make it look more natural. But it really depends on people. So if you don't want to do it, not mandatory. It will still look good without it. I'm pretty sure. You can put it a little higher. Uh, if you don't remember the color, you could always copy, click the shape, paste, and click to apply the cubes. And for this one, we could just drag it down all the way and push it back up a bit and there we go we have a little uh, gap a little curve and i personally just find a little better than nothing and we could also add a curve here to make him look better you gotta always constantly uh kind of see everything to see what you can improve because when you have an idea to improve you're going to like get a good model i'm pretty sure unless you're really lazy and all, I'm, I'm very sure that's gonna happen. Now we have everything, uh, let's put it down actually a little, and just extend it. And now we're going to get the main boss stock. So one, I'm going to see, is one too big. Uh, it's a little thick, I'm gonna go for 0 0.8. Uh, sorry. My mouse is bad, gets me misclicking stuff. 0.8, you can always readjust compared to the uh, main body. Now I feel like 0 0.8 is well, way too small. 0 0.9 should make the uh, make the right choice. Yeah, I think it's alright. And now we're going to stick it up here. Just push it up. And readjust and push it out a little back and then there we go 0 0.5 to alright we're going to readjust every time now you can always reuse it to save time you don't have to get the cubes every time from here at cube and I barely use this honestly I just get a shape and then from there I just duplicate every time so it's like really rare I use this honestly but you could do whatever you want. Normally the back has to be a little thick. So I'm gonna put around up to here, let's say. And then make the size all the way up there so we can reach. One point should be fine. And around there. And now we're going to make a little curve. I think this could be a little more bottom. And this could be a little longer. Now, if this happens, just shift click the ones on that you only want. 3.4. And now we're going to combine this together. This needs to be way thinner. This is not the main. Eight. And then you could reuse this. Make it thin, drag it all the way up here, kind of cover the space that's a little big here. <coughs> and we're gonna place it right here, and there we go, we have a bus stock. But if you feel like that's way too uh, far, which I feel like right now, you could just drag it a little closer. You could even drag it a little more closer. I feel like that's what I need to do and uh, it's normally because I don't have a little space between it uh, but I think it should be alright or you could just simply try having no pull at all because there's guns that does that if that's the case mm, yeah I think having no pull is alright too or just having a little yeah I think this actually makes it better you could also drag these to make it go far, farther into forward, forward, so we could add a little gap, and that too, where's that, and this one, there we go, 
we can drag it around here around here actually not too much or around here around here perfect all right now we're going to reuse this because we don't want to waste too much stuff oh. duplicate or you could use the block as one thing but I want to make a different color so uh, now you see it's way too big here so we're going to scale it down a little If you scale it down normally, the measurement goes a little off, so you'll need to readjust your cell manually. You see it's not centered properly, but I got it now. Alright, so do that. Is it too big? No, I think it should be fine. And then we're going to put a different color, of course. And there we go. I think it should be alright. And. I said that this needs to be a little less darker, but I think it could be a little darker too. Not the same color, but a darker. And here too, it should be a little darker to kind of make a nice difference. Way too lighter doesn't make sense, but way too dark. Uh, Alright. And here I'm going to add, finally, the partial iron sight. Just copy the block from here, duplicate, and start with the main frame 0.2. You could extend, just put it here first, and then you could extend the width, of course, because the I find it's way too small right now. 0.2 could be ideal, and center it a bit. Yeah, centered. Now you bring it around here. You can you can always move it, or you could just simply make a group like here, and then bring this all the way. Click and uh, roll the uh, mouse trick, and you're going to be able to drag the stuff. Now I'm gonna rename this as frontal, frontal, uh, iron sights. Uh, there we go, and extend it a little higher, maybe a little more here, so that we could just readjust every time we win as needed. Now, the car part, it needs to be a little thinner. Uh, one, two should make sense. Alright, 1.5. No, not quite. Should I make it higher? I always should check from here. Is it good enough? I think it's a bit too thin. So I'm going to extend it a little more. Majorly. 0.3. Uh, yeah, 0 0.3 should be fine, actually. I'm going to put it at 0 0.28. Seven, a little smaller, and I could extend this some more upwards, make it bigger. One point two three. All right, now we can add a little curve here to make it even better. Decrease the measurements. It's just like a little decoration, or I don't know if it actually has a use, I'm not sure. But this helps making the model even better. So point two. Decrease the size a little. Drag it up. Right. 
Now I put the stuff and drag it back where it would look better on the back. There we go, my iron sight and everything is made. And basically now I need to work on the main body. So I'm going to make the little uh, scales, uh, I'm not sure how this is called to. Little thing where you kind of attach stuff I suppose. I'm not totally sure how uh, to call that actually. I'm a gun fan but I really never touched a gun so I'm never really sure how that stuff is called. I hope you Americans know how it's called. Because I live in Canada. Let's just make a little slight stay here. This is for the little plate before you add things. It will decrease it a little more. And now I'm gonna start with the scale thing image key. Sir point three gotta be a little narrow. And point two. And just drag it up here there. Yeah, I think that should be alright. And I normally like to make it not too close. Not the quality to the main body. Alright, too big. So 0 0.49. Yeah, that should be fine. Alright, so I'm going to make a duplication. Put it at 5.3. Lower it down a bit. To seven, I guess, and I duplicate again, and it goes to five for five. You notice it increases by 0 0.15 every time. You could always, uh, you always have two ways. One is the way that I used in uh, before. It was really painful doing everything one at a time, or you could just press shift and just duplicate simply and do this drag. Like it really uh, saved my life because before I had to do manually everything one by one this thing literally took me like 5 minutes to do when now it takes me like 1 minute, 2 minutes it's, it's, like, it's like essential stuff you need to know if you wanna fasten things in Blockbench that's something that I found up by accident and also as I mentioned before uh, try visiting the Blockbench Discord they will help you if you have questions I've gotten a lot of help from there actually so yeah most of the time they will give you a valid answer, so like most of the time, I mean like actually 90%. Sometimes they don't know the answer, but I'm pretty sure someone else will. Just gotta be patient there. Alright, and one more. No, I think it should be fine. Now, if you see from far away, it's like a little scale. Uh, if you, it's kind of the same color, but if you see because of the shade, it looks different color. And I'm going to take this out. Don't want to have too many. Okay, cool. Alright, so I could also add a scope here, but I'm not going to do that because that's something uh, that's a customization, not really a regular model. So if you see up here, it's a little thick, right? But we can always change the display just going here. And we'll set to 90. And set this one to zero if you want to make it flat to the end. Normally, the gun should be here because the trigger is here. But I just put it here. And <coughs> And you could extend the size, extend the height a bit, if you wish. And from here we can decrease how big it will be. And there we go, we got our uh, little uh, rifle thing thingamajigi. And also here you could also add a little I don't know, a line. I'm not sure again what that is for. However, that exists for some uh, rifles. So I found that uh, a little cool to add it in. 
0 0.9 face down decrease the size of course it took me barely uh, 30 minutes to make this so before I used to take like two two hours to make a rifle like that now I'm used to it I can just make like stuff as I want so it's really a good thing it just comes from practice and experience so don't discourage yourself if you're not as good right now you'll get there soon I hope this uh, tutorial helped you out thank you uh, for watching and bye